before we start this video, uh, I did change some stuff and I do want to note that in this video before watching it. Now don't skip, don't skip through the end and watch this. I really want you to uh, don't forget this part that I'm doing now uh, because I already had everything hooked up and then my friend said, uh, hey, you want to switch those off? So let me show you before you start watching this video, but don't skip it, continue watching. All right, so this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> You'll see when this video starts that I actually put this bus bar right there and I swapped, I had the fuse right there. So now I am actually have the fuse directly from the battery and then I have the bus bar. All right, so that'll do it for that. So continue watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. install on your RV. Today we are installing an inverter in my RV and the reason I'm installing an inverter is to have power at night when we stop in places such as a rest area or Walmart. I do not want to just use the DC batteries but I do want to use my AC which means I want to allow every plug in my RV to work to charge stuff, uh, to watch maybe some TV at night, if we are just stopping for the night for a couple hours, or even better, if we are actually at a harvest host and they actually want you to turn your generators off at a certain time, this is a perfect. So what I did was I drew it out on a, on a, on a piece of paper and always get a second opinion. As of right now, I just wanna basically install an inverter, connect it to my DC batteries, and then be able, being able to plug into the inverter and plugging into my RV. So talking about getting a second opinion and helping, you know, getting help in case you have any questions. I was actually going to install a different kind of fuse and uh, you know, by getting a second opinion, he said, oh no, let me figure it out for you. This is the amp of fuse you wanna go with. It actually made me feel comfortable as I was uh, getting a second opinion and uh, which you always have to. There is so much information online and on YouTube here, just like there is on this station, that it kind of will confuse you. So, but you could take bits and pieces from every other video that you watch or every everything, the other article that you read, you could take bits and pieces and put it all together and come up with a plan and then you can bounce it off somebody else. By the way, if you have not subscribed, please do so by hitting that subscribe button. Go a step further, hit that bell, and you will get notified for videos like this. I am so excited that I'm doing this project. Uh, we are going to be learning together. The reason I am removing this wall is because I wanna make sure that I put supports back here uh, that's gonna hold up my board. I'm actually gonna put a half inch piece of plywood on this wall and I'm gonna attach everything to it. Ooh, I just scratched myself. Okay, so that's, it's this wire right here is the solar wire that's going to the roof. I like how they have, you know, the solar wire running there. It's easy access to when I wanna hook up my solar. All right, so now that I know that there's supports back here, I'm going to measure from the top to the bottom and I'm gonna go only two feet. I'm gonna go from here to there and I'm going to cut a piece of plywood that's gonna fit inside here. That is a perfect size right there. So that is a perfect size from here to here where the two studs would meet up. So now I'm gonna cut it 18 inches across. This way it is from top to bottom a full sheet. So why am I not attaching my inverter to the back panel of the RV of the wall? Is because it's just a, it's just an eighth inch piece of panel that has no, no strength at all to it unless you go into a stud. And by that time, I might as well put a nice solid panel on it. Uh, this way, everything can be attached to one panel. And why else am I doing this? Because I plan on attaching everything here first, then bringing it in the RV. Thank you. 
this is my panel. This is where I'm gonna be installing the inverter, the fuses, and the later, if I do end up putting something else, and on my shutoffs and stuff like that. So now that we have this, I wanna make sure that it fits. In there, let's see if it fits. Oh yeah, look at that. That's how it's gonna be, right there. I'm not going to paint it. Um, I'm actually gonna do it. I love the wood. I just know I'm not gonna paint it because it's easy to write on this wood and I know I could use the stickers and everything, but I think I'm comfortable not painting it, but I will use the better side, which is this side right here. So let's talk about this inverter real quick. This is a Renogy 2000 watt Pure Sign Wave Inverter. It comes with these wires right here that are doubled. I kind of like it. I, I kind of like it because it has the copper on copper. So I may use this or I may not. We'll see how I get, how I go along. But it comes with the positive, the negative terminal, these snap off and you would screw into the, what I like about this is that screws into this piece right here. And then you have a nut right under it that make sure that it does not come loose. So on this side, you do have three receptacles. You have the remote. I'm not sure if I'm gonna use that remote. I may just go ahead and just walk up to it, click on, click off, and I'm done, uh, versus running this remote. Now, at a later time, I may run this remote in the RV when I hook up my solar. This way I can go ahead and uh, just turn it on inside the RV. But for now, I'm going to not use this remote, but I will put it in a safe spot. Then they have right here, which is the hard wire. Basically, you want to screw this. If I'm not mistaken, you would hardwire it into this. But for now, I'm going to show you how I use, I'm going to be using it. I'm going to be plugging into here with a 20 amp adapter to a 15 amp, and I have a 50 foot 20 amp uh, extension cord that I'm going to be attaching to this right here and that'll be plugged in my RV. Basically, this is the setup. I don't know if I missed anything, but um, this is how it is. It's pretty cool. I bought me a 20 amp wire. I did buy these adapters, which you need to buy in order for your 20 amp plug to plug in, because if you notice, one is up, one is sideways, and that's what makes this convert to a regular receptacle not doing anything to the current system because I want the converter to continue to charge the batteries uh, which we have two lithium batteries that we're using okay so here's the board I thought it would be easier building it down uh, because you could see how what a small space this is so by building it down I was able to put things where I want it is done so what I'm going to do now is I marked where the stud is and it's right about there. And I've marked all the studs. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a screw here, here. So I think I'm gonna move it down a little. Right about there. This way I can reach in here and grab the shut off. You know? And I'm still on my studs. So it's not like I'm going off of my studs here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a screw right in the middle here. This way it holds it. So there's a stud. Ow, come on. That's into a stud right there. So let's go ahead and drill a hole right there. I think I'm gonna go like right here. If you're wondering, I already went under to make sure there was nothing down there. I'm going to go ahead and remove these and keep those. All right, so this is what I'm talking about. You'll see when this video starts that I actually put this bus bar right there and I swapped, I had the fuse right there. So now I am actually have the fuse directly from the battery and then I have 
the bus bar. I wanna mention that I had all my wires custom made and this is the number two wire, AWG I believe it is, and I had every single one of these made. Now I did order them, I did order a few on Amazon, the ones back there that you see, but this one, that one, these shorter ones, I all had them custom made, which was very helpful. This bottom right here is actually going to the, if you have two batteries, it's going to the second battery on the other side. So this way, one red wire goes to the one battery, and that black wire goes to the other side on the negative on the other battery, and then you parallel both. And then what you have here is this wire going down is actually going to a bus bar down below where everything is coming into it. And then of course, it goes to the negative on this inverter and then the positive comes here. So those of you with a travel trailer, you know that the batteries are on the outside of the RV. So what I have to do here is go under, make sure all the batteries are disconnected. None, none of the wires are gonna be touching anything. So since to minimize room up inside the, um, the, the basement, we call it, we're not gonna put our batteries up there. So we're gonna keep our batteries right here. So that being said, what we wanna do is we have to put a fuse as close as possible, close as possible to the battery. So there's nothing wrong with going with two fuses. Uh, the, like I, my buddy said, the fuse is not here to protect your device. It's actually to protect from fire in case the wire overheats, it blows the fuse and it stops it dead in its track right there. So what I plan on doing now that I have the waterproof box installed that I'm gonna put my fuse inside here. I'm going to take the wire that's coming up there. Now remember, note, no wires are connected to the battery right now. So there is no danger uh, that I'm gonna be cutting the wire. So I want you to be aware, do not cut any wire if it's all connected to your batteries. So, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm going to take this, I'm gonna cut it right about there. That looks like it would be enough right about there. And then I'll take the other end, I'll connect it, and this will be connected to the battery, so that should be definitely enough. So I'll do that right there, I'll cut it. And up here, so I see how this is too long, so I'm actually gonna cut it back a little bit more because I want as less wire as possible and closer to the battery. So hopefully it's not, I won't put my fingers in there so it stays focused, but that's pretty much how it looks. There is the, fuse that's going to be from the battery to this fuse and then from this red wire coming up will be the red wire going to the next fuse and then so on to the bus bar. Now every RV, every setup is different like I said earlier. I went with a 200 amp uh, uh, fuse. Uh, it was recommended from a buddy of mine so that's what I did. He did all the numbers. So you might want to figure out what amps you want to go with and according to your batteries and, and convert and inverter as well. Just like that. I have a waterproof box that my fuse is in. Um, I don't know if it matters or not but for some reason I, I prefer this being in a waterproof box. This is open to the elements as you can see. This is my hitch. There's my foot. And uh, I'm happy, I'm happy the way this turned out. I'm very excited and happy that I did have a, a 200 amp within eight inches of the battery. So I'm happy about that. Okay, so this is just short of going solar. If I was to go solar, that means the solar panels would actually go down with a wire, which is behind this wall like I showed you earlier, go to this one panel, and then that would charge your batteries, and then you would do the same. But this is not the way I'm doing it. I'm gonna go solar later, but for now, I just wanna power everything, what I can at night, whatever I can. Now we have three plugs right here. So what we're gonna do with those three plugs is I'm only gonna utilize one. I may plug something in later if I need to work outside or whatever, but we're only gonna use one. That's the plug I'm going to pull all my power from and plug it into the RV. This cord right here, okay, which is a 20 amp cord connected to my 50 amp, so it goes 50 to 15, and then I have a nice thick 20 amp wire. So if you take this cord, pull it down, come over here, plug it into this 20 amp adapter that's that's converted to 15. I'm gonna put that right at the bottom there. 
there is a ethernet wire or phone cord that you plug into there. I'm not gonna use that right now. Basically what that does is that'll allow you to control this inverter inside your RV as well as this right here, which is the gauge to show you how fast your battery's charging and how, how fast you're draining your battery. What you need to do is turn your converter off inside your RV. We have a converter switch right here. What I'll do is I will actually turn that off. This way the converter, when I'm running my inverter, it is not charging the batteries and going in a circle. So if that makes any sense, if the converter is on and you have something plugged in, what happens is it's plugged in and it's turning around and going to charge the batteries that you're actually pulling from. So it's very important that you come in your RV, turn your converter off, and then you can turn your inverter on. This way it stops right at this fuse, right at this circuit breaker, and it's not going any further than this. In other words, it's not going to charge your batteries. Everybody should have this in newer models. So what I do is I'm going to actually turn that off. That's the converter. And I could actually hear it charging my batteries once I turn it back on because I do have the generator on. So I'm not going to get into what size batteries you should be using, but I am using two lithium batteries and um, at 105 hours, amp hours that is. So that's going to allow me 210 amp hours for this system that I'm using here. And that's why I went with the 2000 watt inverter because I plan on adding solar later. Once again, I did not do this alone. I had a friend help me, walk me step by step. This was the most basic of the installation that you can be. I mean, he was like, oh yeah, I got to do this, got to do that. And I struggled with a lot of things because I it was electrical and if you are not familiar with electrical boy i'll tell you it's scary stuff so that's why i kept saying if if you don't feel comfortable doing it don't do it just hire somebody um fortunately i had someone to go to all right so i ordered these alex tech uh, split sleeving and what i'm going to do is i want my goal is to sleeve these right here on my inverter uh, my inverter wires sleeve that and go under and making sure that no wires are being touched with anything else so that's what i plan on doing with these wires and then i plan on sleeving this wire going into here right there um, i know it's on that plastic but there's still a chance that it can start rubbing also a friend of mine um, recommended these clips and I only need a few of them. And what these clips are gonna do, they're going to clip on, clip this wire right there. And maybe I'll throw a couple more clips over there just to secure the wires so they don't move as we're driving. All right, so now that I'm in here, I put one there, there. I put these sleeves on. So now they're going all the way through. And I, I end up buttoning up all these, making sure all this was nice and secure. But that's how it looks, and uh, this completes the job. Look at that. Nice sleeves going all the way through, protected. There it is. Hey guys, I hope this video was helpful to you. I know it was a short video, and apologize for the glasses. It is very bright out here. My eyes are very sensitive. I got called out on a video a couple videos ago and said, why do you wear your glasses? Or it was on Facebook or something. You know, you look silly when you wear your glasses. Why do you wear your Well, you know what, when you're out in the sun and you're doing stuff with your RV, I'm sure you wear your glasses as well. I just, it is so bright out here. Uh, sometimes I can get away with not wearing them. Everything I talk about in this, in this video is in the description below. We are Amazon affiliates. I have to say that. So once again, if you need anything, please click, please click on that link down below and it'll take you right to Amazon and you can go shopping for anything or you can continue shopping for what you clicked on and stuff like that. We are actually leaving tomorrow. We are actually heading to Myrtle Beach. And then from Myrtle Beach, we are heading to Michigan. And from Michigan, we are heading um, back to, uh, to Atlanta for the race for NASCAR. So we are very busy. And now you can see the reason why I did this because of a lot of harvest hosts at night and a lot of dry camping. Hey, a big shout out to a friend of mine. I really appreciate your help. And I just want you to know that I am thankful for your help. And I hope everybody, you guys have any questions, please, Send them down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer them. Hey everybody, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. Give me a thumbs up. We will see you guys in the next video. 
Myrtle Beach? It is.